about her. What? This was the moment when Valerie Plame read her name in the Washington Post. Her life changed forever. Wilson never worked for the CIA, but his wife... As an agency Plame. operative on weapons of mass destruction. He just went ahead and did it. Does this run overseas? What's in the newspaper, Valerie? It's on the... No, no, Vax every... column. Does he, is he syndicated it's overseas? It's everywhere. After 18 years of serving her country as a spy, she was outed. A Washington insider betrayed by her own government. My name is everywhere. My real name. Those in the highest office thought to destroy the career of a covert agent to punish me for telling the truth. Your wife is a traitor. How dare you talk about my... Fair Game is Hollywood's version of the unmasking of Valerie Plame, an attack which was traced all the way back to the White House. They push you until they find the point at which you break. You can't break me. I don't have a breaking point. I like this scene. Eight years and a world away from her former life as a spy, Valerie Plame now lives and works in Santa Fe. So Valerie, what's it like seeing yourself on the summer screen? <laughs> Well, it's not me, it's Naomi Watts. But in any case, it is uh, surreal. It's very strange. And uh, although my husband and I have seen this uh, for a few times, it is still very difficult each time because uh, it uh, brings back a lot of uh, memories and not all uh, positive. Who are you? Let go of my uncle. Who are you? No! We need information about your uncle, contacts, shipments. If you help us, we help you. If you don't, your brother dies. And tomorrow you're sitting next to your uncle in a cell in Thailand, and it won't be me asking the questions. No. And even when the movie came out recently, you know, it was just um, seen or written about that it was just a, a Hollywood drama. You, you know, did you really do that? Did you do some of this stuff that's portrayed in the movie? <laughs> I did. No. no, you can't help We can help him, Hafiz. Listen to me. Because I promise you one thing. Right now, you have no idea what we can and cannot do. My husband and I are both pleased that the movie tells the essential truth of what happened. It's because of their determined pursuit of the truth that Valerie and her husband, former U.S. Ambassador Joseph Wilson, have such an extraordinary story to tell. The British government has learned that Saddam Hussein recently sought significant quantities of uranium from Africa. This rumor, presented as fact in 2003, became a key part of George Bush's reasons for war against Iraq. But a year earlier, the CIA had sent Joseph Wilson to Niger to investigate. The vice president has received a report concerning the purchase of material to build nuclear weapons. We need to get in close. They turn to her husband for answers. It is my opinion. A sale that size could not have happened. I have teams in the field. They're all saying the same thing. But when the truth was made public... What do you think the White House wants to hear, huh? There was no nuclear program. We need to change the story. They made her pay the price. Valerie, your name is in the paper. It says you're CIA agent. I don't know anything about tubes, I'm not quite... Valerie Plame's husband was outraged and went public over his government's lie. He felt he could not stand by and say nothing. Uh, so uh, we had no idea. We knew that there would be pushback. The Bush White House uh, did not take criticism lightly, uh, and we knew that there would be pushback, and we were prepared for that. But it, we thought, of course, it would just be directed at Joe. Wilson never worked for the CIA, but his wife... The White House hit back at Joseph Wilson by exposing his wife. Does this run overseas? What's in the newspaper, Valerie? It's on the... No, news. no, Vax column. Does he... It's a syndicated it's overseas. It's everywhere. Uh, all of a sudden, I'm like the CIA poster child. Uh, there's a lot of unbalanced people in the world, as we know. Uh, I'm thinking about the safety of my family. Our twins at that time were just three years old. And finally, I know my career is over. 
Suspended immediately from all operations, Valerie Plame feared for her contacts in the field. Did you ever find out what happened to those people? I think what I can tell you is that I know what happened in some cases and I do not know what happened in others. But the movie, again, there's some composite characters and so forth, but it's a pretty accurate rendition. But it wasn't just her contacts that she was concerned about. She also feared for the safety of her family and her marriage. What did that actually do to your relationship? Oh, it, it tore it apart. It was all bad. Hey, you're welcome. Hello? Valerie, turn on MSNBC. Mom, why can I have to Okay, go? hold on one second. They've launched an investigation. Ashcroft just announced it. They say he's going to convene a grand jury. Hold on a second. Get if the FBI on. now is conducting a criminal investigation into who leaked the name of the CIA undercover... They want me to comment on the investigation. Joe, just hold on. We've got to fight this. And we cannot... We've got to push back. Mom, tried to buy in I rich uranium and not... Yeah. I've got another call. i got to go. Joe! He wanted me to speak out and defend him, and yet I could not. Uh, because I was still employed by the CIA. Uh, he understood early on that you needed to push back, uh, that they were really bullies, and you needed the best way to deal with a bully is to push back. But I, I just didn't know what to do. Eventually, Valerie Plame did speak out, giving evidence at a congressional committee. We in the CIA always know that we might be exposed and threatened by foreign enemies. It was a terrible irony that administration officials were the ones who destroyed my cover. Furthermore, testimony in the criminal trial of Vice President Cheney's former chief of staff, who has now been convicted on seri of serious crimes, indicates that my exposure arose from purely political motives. Scooter Libby, Vice President Dick Cheney's Chief of Staff, was convicted of lying and obstructing an investigation. He lied, and he lied really badly. Journalist David Korn has been reporting the Valerie Plame story since it broke. He lied in a way that Patrick Fitzgerald, the special prosecutor, could not ignore. You know, and that's... And I think he thought this thing would just all go away. Leak investigations come and go all the time in Washington. And he probably thought, I'm you know, chief of staff to the vice president. I'll just dismiss these FBI bumpkins with a little story, and that'll be the end of it. Immediately after his conviction, Scooter Libby's 30-month prison term was commuted by President George Bush. These folks were so consumed with the idea that they had to justify the war in Iraq because really they had misled the public. There were no WMDs, and what they had said before the war, war, a lot of it was wrong, a lot of it was false. Thank you for coming here. I wanted to convey my outrage to you in person. I know it's not easy, but I want you to know how much the agency appreciates your silence in the light of this matter. We can't afford to have this knife fight go on any longer. I get death threats every day. People threaten to kill my husband, hurt my children. I went to the agency and I requested security to protect my family. I was declined because, quote, my circumstances fall outside budget protocols. If this is a knife fight, sir, right now we're fighting it alone. <laughs> I, and I think Val Valerie, I don't know if she'll tell you, you know, if she says this on the record or not, but, you know, I think she felt really let down and unprotected by the CIA. The top-level folks didn't really rally around her. They isolated her very quickly. And she, you know, felt she had no choice but to leave the agency eventually. The intense public scrutiny of this former secret agent took its toll. So I was very, very concerned about the safety of our children. I mean, that they're paramount. Uh, so our home in Washington was right in town, right on the street, you know, and uh, we would walk out and there would be photographers uh, on our lawn, and I found it horrifying.
peaceful, isn't it? Huh. Love it. I'm so gorgeous. And this is a great... The family fled Washington and settled in Santa Fe. Now, having featured in Vanity Fair magazine, written an autobiography, and had a movie made about her, life is anything but covert. While working as a consultant, she's also one of the leaders of Global Zero, an organisation aiming to rid the world of nuclear weapons. The people that are involved in Global Zero are not liberal, happy, let's hold hands and hope for the best. There's some serious hawks um, that, uh, you know, from uh, Jimmy Baker to Henry Kissinger and others that have said, we need to address this issue of nuclear proliferation. It is not a partisan issue. I can see that there's, there's a lot of movers and shakers and, and, and there's a, a lot of work being done, but how realistic is complete nuclear disarmament when you've got countries like Iran, and their leaders saying, well, if you've got it, the Americans, or if you've got it, Israel, mm -hmm. then why shouldn't we? Absolutely. Um, I am no fan of Ahmadinejad, but he makes a very good point, uh, which is, why should you, the Western developed nations, be allowed to be in the nuclear club? And we, the Islamic nations, the less developed ones, are not. Somehow we are not to be uh, allowed into the big boys club. Well, there is no argument to that question. Uh, While Valerie Plame is keen to tackle the big issues, she was trained as a spy. So what about WikiLeaks and the mass publication of secrets? I have highly am, uh, ambivalent feelings about WikiLeaks. Uh, on one hand, so much information is overclassified in it, uh, because it's so much easier to do it that way. And not only is it easier, it, it takes less thought, of course, if you just stamp classified on something and put it into one pile versus another. Uh, but it also, uh, the cla by classifying something in many, time, in many cases, it's simply hiding government mismanagement, corruption, haplessness. Uh, so there's that. On the other hand, of course, uh, as a former intelligence officer, I feel very strongly about the protection of sources and methods. And from what I understand, uh, from what has appeared in the media, in the case of the WikiLeaks, there were some instances that did put into jeopardy sources and methods, I think, in Afghanistan. It's interesting because the, the premise of their argument is that it's the public's right to know. And on many levels, I feel that perhaps that, that's what Joe's argument was. Do you see any parallels between the uh, two? I don't think it is analogous. I would hesitate to draw parallels, a strong parallel between what Joe did, writing a New York Times op-ed piece, um, and the release of hundreds of thousands of classified documents online. Despite all that's happened to her, Plain says she's not bitter. This patriotic American says she would do it all again. The lessons I I draw that I take away is that we, we are a great country and uh, we do have uh, the joy of freedom of speech and you can, you can speak truth to power and there are going to be consequences but you can survive it.